Great, thank you. Um, since our chair is up here, I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.05. Um, and the first order of business will be to um, do roll call, and then we will assign a temporary chair. Um, so in attendance are Representative Robert Bailey, Representative Genevieve Cerf, Representative Richard Semerero, and Representative Lee White. Um, not attending our representative, or not in attendance, sorry, our representative um, Thomas Frickman, Representative Jackie Kopp, who um, did send me an email and said that she would not be in attendance tonight, and Chair Lauren Gauthier. Um, so I'm going to um, ask for nominations for a chair for this meeting. To nominate you, Jill. <laughs> Technically, I'm not part of the committee. I am ex officio, so if nobody else is willing to do it, I will do it. Are there any other nominations? Is there a second to the nomination then? Bailey, second. Thank you. Any other nominations? Um, well, I, I, I would nominate um, Richard Semeraro if you wanted to do it. <laughs> I tried that one earlier. <laughs> all right. Um, hearing no other nominees, all in favor of me running this meeting until Lauren comes. If she comes, I will be happy to relinquish it quickly. <laughs> Anyone in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. okay, thank you. Um, so we do have a chat, Jonathan. Is there any? Um, our first order of business is account 1063, Groton Public Library, which is on page 140 of your book. Introduce yourselves for everybody, please. Chair Green, Library, and this is Assistant Director Mike Spellman. And I also have um, Sean Greeley, who's the GMTV Specialist. Could they speak louder, please? Hi, Lee. It's Jennifer at the library. Hi, Jennifer. I can hear you now. Thank you. How you doing? <laughs> Good, thank you. I have with me Assistant Director Michael Spellman, and also I have Sean Greeley, you know, the Municipal Video Specialist. The mic is up here. What? The mic, the speaker's here, but the mic's up here. Okay. I keep talking to what you do. <laughs> yelling into the speaker. You still can hear me, okay? Just tell me if you can't hear me. Um, so the library has been slowly mer emerging out of the pandemic like everyone else and business is really picking up i'm happy to say um, and staff of course is quickly and readily transitioning back to the vibrant community library that we were the days of pre-covid so this year we based our budget on this time of transition um, you know looking ahead we don't know what the future may hold, but we figured to keep our operations um, level. And really the budget increase is related to contractual raises with the union and minimum wage of our part-time staff requirements. And um, that's pretty much it. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any, and um, Michael can also address any of you who may have this question. You can no. up there. Okay. Uh, I've been on the board of directors of the library in, in years past. It's, it's been a few years since, but for several years I was on the board of directors. Uh, at one point, I was president of the Friends of the Broughton Public Library and uh, got very familiar with the work they do. And it's a great organization. and. I, I certainly am 100% in favor of uh, their budget request. Thank you. 
For the record, the amount um, that the town council passed is the number that was passed or was requested by the library. It's one million six hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred seventy dollars. Does anyone have any questions? Um. I make a motion yeah. to accept uh, the $1,685,970. Representative Bailey, it's $1,685,970. Is that the number? Yes, correct. Yep. Second. Okay. Um, I do have a just an information question. Um, um, could you tell me how many um, children come to the library to use a computer who may not have a computer at home? Um, and I don't know how it all worked out during COVID, but did you find that there was a need um, for the library to fill that, you know, fill that um, um, that need? If if um, if the, the kids didn't have computers at home, um, I would like to tell you I, I would have that number offhand. But um, what I can tell you is we've we've seen a decrease in I want to say when we opened back up during COVID um, of computer usage with children for the simple fact that the schools were able to give out laptops to every child in the school system so they could utilize that for their schooling. So they didn't need to rely on us as much for a computer outside the home. So um, right now though, we are starting to see children coming in um, to utilize the computers. Uh, we have a couple of items on the computers like um, ABC mouse and some other you know, software on there that helps children with early literacy. We have tumble books, we have e-books, and they are utilizing those services. Um, but to your, your question, mostly children have been utilizing the laptops that were given out at, at the school. Oh, that's great news. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> Any other questions or comments? Then the number on the floor is one million six hundred eighty-five thousand nine hundred and seventy. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's four affirmative votes. The number passes. Okay. Moving on um, to account thirty-three ten on page one forty-five. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm here at the wrong. <laughs> it's nice seeing you. I know it is nice seeing you. It's my room. Bye, Chris. Take care. Okay, so we are on page one forty-five for Barrow HCT, um, number account number three three one zero. So um, for those of you who don't know, Borrow It CT is a program, it's a state cooperative program in which we lend books and borrow books um, from over 190 participating libraries in the state. And we get reimbursements for all of those loans out of Broughton that we distribute to the other libraries. So that reimbursement um, is calculated by the state and they make a decision at late April on how much we will be receiving. And then it's to be used specifically for library services only. And um, we typically always have a plan of what we're going to be spending every year. Um, this particular year, we're looking at using the funding to replace two servers. 
that were originally slated in a, in a capital improvement project for this year, but we took them out <coughs> because we had this funding to um, help that, uh, you know, allow us to uh, purchase those items. So, you know, every year we're never quite sure what is going to happen with this funding, but we did receive word that we are going to be get, mm -hmm. getting borrowed money this year. So I'm happy to answer any questions about this program. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought we were in human services on page 144. Um, 145. Page 145. Oh, page 140. Yeah, page, yeah. what page are we on? 145. 135. Oh, okay, sorry. Four five. One, this, four, five. One, four, five. Correct. Yes. But that's, okay. According to my book, that's human services. Should say Bowerwit CT. Hold on. It's 145. I have 145. Oh, I get it. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. Sorry. Now, so just for clarification, this twenty thousand um, dollars was passed by the council, um, and it's all a grant. So this is really not costing the taxpayer dollars anything. Correct. Okay. Is there any questions? Haley makes a motion for twenty thousand dollars. So move. Hold on. We got Bailey made the motion. Samarero. Seconded. Is there any discussion on the $20,000? Um, actually, I just have a question. Is, is that, and I'm going to keep asking this question. Um, is this just a sufficient amount for you? Um, do you think to make up for the whatever um, COVID may have cost you? I'm not sure I understand the question. Are you asking if I, um, this, we, we get this every year. We have received this every year. So okay. this, this is almost supplemental to what we receive in our operating budget every year. It comes um, from the state. It does. Okay. And it can only be used for library purposes. Representative Surf, do you have any more questions? No, nope, no more. Okay. So the number on the floor is $20,000. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that is four to zero to zero. That now. Okay. The next number on our budget, our next item on our budget is CIP number seven technology seven G, which is on page two hundred and thirty-nine. Two hundred and thirty-nine. Correct. Thank you. I have a cat in front of me. No. <laughs> so, H239 and the amount of $91,000 was passed by the town council. Do you want to speak to that? I guess I am. Um, so uh, this is a CI pre-project to upgrade all of our town meeting rooms. Uh, this year, we're in the third year of it. Uh, we've uh, done two years of uh, equipment replacing, trying to get it up to today's standards of technology. Um, and also to uh, make it easier for the town to conduct business and for the public to be able to see the business. Um, the uh, first couple of years, uh, first year, we replaced all the wireless microphones, mostly because we had to. Uh, they uh, were uh, uh, 
they were in a frequency that we could no longer use according to the FCC. So we had to replace all of those and we did that throughout the town. Uh, the second year we've been replacing, we're actually just kind of finishing up replacing all of the uh, meeting room equipment in the town hall of annex. It's kind of how we're actually watching the meeting tonight uh, with some of that technology. So far we've completed room three and two uh, and the equipment for room one is out to bid. So we're hoping to have that in place by July 1st. So we'll keep our fingers crossed with, uh, with uh, the supply chain and getting the equipment in. Uh, but uh, that is uh, well underway. Uh, this, uh, this year for the 91,000 that, that we're asking for, we're moving on to other town buildings. Uh, the first one would be the town hall itself where we have several conference rooms. I think on the budget book it says there's three conference rooms, technically there's four. Um, and uh, there's kind of smaller conference rooms. Uh, in one in the town manager's office, uh, one in IT, one in finance, and one uh, in HR. So there are four there. And we've actually been finding uh, that uh, some of the town hall personnel has actually been coming up here to use some of the, the meeting room equipment up here because of the Zoom and, and the conferencing abilities. We want to put that in place at, at the town hall itself. So um, uh, that's for those four rooms. So that's kind of a bit of a smaller project but uh, a very necessary project that would actually uh, make uh, town, conducting town business much more efficient. And then uh, also in this year uh, that we're proposing would be to uh, upgrade the library meeting rooms. Uh, there are several there, actually there's more than several. There's uh, rooms one and two that everybody knows, big community rooms. Uh, and that's gonna be a larger part of the project is, uh, is much more diverse use of that room. Uh, everything from uh, motorized screens to sound systems uh, and then connectivity that, that goes on in that room. We want to make it easier for people to come in and use that room for the public. And then when we have meetings there, we want to make it easier for, for the, uh, the, the staff as well. Uh, and then we have smaller meeting rooms, so the rooms uh, three, four, five, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that we want to put some technology in there, uh, you know, especially for the smaller meetings. A lot of times we have to wheel equipment in there or people show up and uh, it's after, you know, I've left and uh, the stuff has to be set up. We want to have stuff in there that they can utilize things that are common for, for them to use. And then we also want to upgrade the children's activity room. Uh, we have a great space in there uh, for children's programming. Uh, a lot of times they have to move into the larger meeting rooms uh, because of the technology. We want to put some of that technology in, in that room as well. Uh, and then, of course, we have the, the uh, tech lab. Uh, the tech lab is what it sounds like. It's a technology lab. Uh, and uh, we have uh, an older, uh, large screen in there. Uh, it's not half as efficient as the stuff that we're putting in here, like this touch view that I have uh, in this room. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. And so the other big thing that I'm also trying to see that we can do is try to make things uh, a lot more common so that if somebody comes up to the annex uh, and they know how to use uh, rooms two and three up here and then they go to the town hall they can use utilize the, that that equipment in there because it'll be very similar we're trying to homogenize uh, the equipment in the past we've been kind of very eclectic about the way we buy equipment uh, sometimes it goes through me sometimes it doesn't uh, and uh, it has been really well planned out. So this whole plan kind of developed out of that kind of philosophy too, to try to make it uh, a little bit more homogenized uh, and for people to be trained in it and how to use it. And then when they go into room one, it's kind of the same. It might have a couple of different bells and whistles, but it's kind of the same. Uh, so uh, we want to make it much more efficient and easy to use. And then lastly, the, the last uh, component that I, I've, really been kind of uh, wanting to see us do is really become into ADA compliancy. Uh, we have uh, people that need assistive hearing devices and not all of our larger meeting rooms that are required to have them have them. And so as we go through the rooms uh, that, that uh, are required to have them, like this room should have it, has over a certain amount of uh, people, uh, it should have an assistive hearing uh, device system it does have an assistive hearing device uh, system in it now. Uh, room one had a very small one. Uh, it's kind of clunky how to use. Uh, we're gonna put the same system in that room as well. 
when we move to the library, we're gonna do the same thing. So when people come to library programs and they, they need some help with their, their hearing, uh, they, can, they can just uh, ask for a device and uh, they'll hand it out to them. And then when they're done, they'll hand it back to us. So um, yeah, so a, a lot of these rooms we're trying to get into compliance. So as we move along, we'll try to, to get those all put in place. When we go, go to the senior center, obviously we'll want to put one, uh, a nice system in there as well. So that's kind of really the overall plan and, and uh, what we're doing. Um, and of course this plan uh, is definitely taken into consideration that I, I have a feeling we'll be doing these hybrid meetings for a little bit. So all these rooms will have uh, the hybrid, uh, most of these rooms will have the hybrid capability, uh, especially the, the conference type rooms and, and meeting rooms. Um, thank you yep. for that information. Hold on one second. Um, hey. Representative White, before we um, move any anywhere forward, I want it noted that Chair Gauthier arrived approximately 6.20. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't look at my watch right away. Um, and um, if she is comfortable, I would like to relinquish this over to her. We are on CIP 7G on page 239. No motions have been made for a number at this point. Thank you so much. I'm assuming I can't really tell from the, but it sounds like uh, moderator Rusk's voice. So I appreciate that for you jumping in. I completely apologize for my tardiness. Um, and uh, moderator Rusk, are you joining us for the whole meeting? I will be here for the whole meeting, yes. Uh, would you would you mind continuing to take the minutes uh, just for consistency? Not a problem. Uh, if you'd like me to take over that role, I will. Yep, I've got it, not a problem. I appreciate that so much. Um, and so we just heard um, from the library on CIP 7, is it? 7G, correct. 7G, great. Um, do any members of the committee have any questions? I Looks do. like um, Rep Surf has her little hand icon up and then we'll go to Representative White. Did you want me first or someone else? Uh, second, please. Representative Surf, your question. Okay, let me put my hand back down. Um, Yes, um, Sean, you know, and it's been a long time since I've done RTM budget, but I'm always ready to give you the moon because you do so much with every dollar that we give you. Um, I do have a technical question from you for you because I have been attending, because I've been ill, I've been attending all the meetings uh, by Zoom and the quality of the meetings is just incredibly different from one set of meetings to another. And uh, to me, and I think anybody else who's ill or who gets COVID or whatever, it really, if a meeting is really important, we really have to be able to hear what's going on. Uh, and I was at a historic district commission meeting the other day, and I could not understand a single word that was said in that meeting. Can you explain what the issue is and whether you're going to be able to fix it with your, your projected um, uh, plans for this year? So, uh, yes, there's there's definitely a few issues going on, um, particularly where the RTM is. Uh, the RTM is, uh, we didn't have any funding to kind of uh, switch to, to Zoom. Uh, we've kind of pulled together uh, equipment to do Zoom meetings, these hybrid meetings there. Um, and we are, uh, it, it, and the other difficult part of it is actually a couple more difficult parts of it. The other difficult part is a very, very large room <laughs> with uh, a lot of echo in it and uh, in a lot of participants where we have, we could have up to 40 participants or 35 participants spread out. And, um, and then we're also trying to do some public address uh, audio in the uh, room for people that are attending in person for public. And so sounds are kind of bouncing around uh, in that room. Uh, and then the third problem is not everybody's always using their microphones appropriately. So we are trying to address it. I think every meeting we're trying to make tinker with that particular meeting. Uh, out of all the hybrid meetings, uh, that is the most difficult meeting to, uh, to do uh, because there's so many variables, uh, but we are working on it, trying to make it better for everybody to hear and listen um, and I think you'll find it uh, better as we go along. Uh, other people that are, are other meetings that you were talking about with the historic district, uh, 
I want to say classify that is that they're in the learning stage of this room. I, I believe the historic district's been in here most of the time. Um, and so they haven't been fully utilizing uh, their conference microphone. So I think there's going to be this transition period as we all kind of come back and people are meeting in these hybrid situations, people that are running them here are on a learning curve on how to how to use the room. But once they get it, I think I think you, you're going to see that audio improve. Um, as we came up here tonight, I noticed that uh, we had some mismatched speakers. Uh, this speaker got taken over there. We're going to try to get a system set up a little bit better so that when we move the speakers around, they're not always having to be reconnected or paired with the device. It's just automatically going to pair. That's so I, I think we're just in that little phase of adjustment for, for technology. So there's really a couple things that the, the RTM obviously being the, the most difficult in, in the council, they're meeting in the same room. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just that transition period for, for groups coming in and start to use the US network. Yeah, well, uh, this, if this is a room that was used for the Historic District Commission, then they really are doing a lousy job because tonight, I, because you're there, of course, um, tonight I can hear everything perfectly. So obviously if it's a people problem, um, I would strongly recommend, you know, some, some more education because it's really tough for those of us who are Zoom, coming in on Zoom. So, um, excuse me, Representative Surf, just to get back to the budget portion of this discussion, you had asked um, Sean if the, the improvements here would help with any part of that. Um, could you answer a little bit more specifically towards that? If any of these improvements, uh, these improvements are not addressing the senior center issue or the historic district. These uh, are addressing uh, the lack of equipment at the, the town hall conference room. Really, there is not any equipment in there. Uh, and because it's old VCRs and, and we, nobody's using VCRs anymore for, for meetings. Uh, and, um, and then the library. So the library, it's gonna improve audio in the, the library, but it's a different thing than what we're talking about uh, improving for historic district. The historic district, I think, as I, I said, it's a transition period. People get trained as we go along a little bit and have a better understanding. So I think you're gonna see that improving there. And uh, as we get to the senior center, which would be, I believe the following year that we'll propose doing uh, the senior center, we'll be making improvements designed just for that room. Right now, we're, it's kind of, we've pulled equipment from here and there to be able to do these meetings at the senior center. Uh, and uh, a lot of it's temporary equipment that's just been wheeled in and um, this stuff will stay there. It'll be home there, it'll be designed for there. So uh, that should improve in another year or so. But as we go along with what we have, we are definitely gonna try to, to make it better. We're, we're always trying to make that better. Thank you. Representative Surf, did you have any additional questions? Well, yes, my question is whether we shouldn't be appropriating money uh, for these issues rather than the $400,000 for the golf course bathrooms out of the era money. I mean, I am so shocked at how we're spending that, that um, era money. Um, I, I, I'm you know, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I disagree even, with you, but uh, the golf course isn't under but, our, our purview. Um, no, and we so can't my really question take is, from there. My, my question is, is there any way that we as the RTM can take money appropriated uh, for that, that um, our thing and, and give it to, um, for instance, what Sean is doing, you know, bringing all these rooms up to snuff for um, Zoom meetings, which are COVID related, because that's when we started really to do it. And it doesn't look like we're going to be able to stop doing it. So that's just an information yeah. question. Can you so, answer uh, that? Uh, Mr. Burt, is that you I see there? Would you be able to yeah. answer? Yeah. Yes, the RTM can't set the funding source, meaning if you increase this item, um, and, and by the way, the RTM can't go beyond the total of the higher total CIP budget of either me or the town council, but um, it would be general fund dollars if you allocate more to this. Okay, yeah, so we, we can't necessarily say it's coming from ARPA and uh, we can't go above whatever the higher of the council or the, the town manager's number is. So it looks like it's kind of uh, a, a moot point as much as I would love to, uh, like you said, give, give Sean the moon. Um, 
it's it's not something that we can do, especially here in committee. And just, and just, just to make clear, you can change an individual item above the number, you, but then you have to balance it somewhere. Within sure. the, so. So. And who, and who um, is, does the RTM vote on the ARPA funds or is that a separate budget? How does that work? You vote on the project, just like you do all CIPs. Okay, so that is part of the budget. Yeah, yeah, we only, I, I, I saw it on your sheets at the um, at the last RTM meeting. Yes, okay. we'll look up. What committee is that going to be done under? Recreation. Well, it, 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 you, for instance, there's a couple ARP items lower on this one. It just depends on which committee that I, that project belongs to. It's, you know, so they go in many committees, but then they all come back to the RTM. Okay. Yeah. So we can, we can uh, meter that out in the full RTM budget meetings, Representative Sir. Uh, okay. So unless unless you're proposing to increase this particular line item, um, I'm going to move over to Representative White's question. Um, um, how much How much would it be to cost to do the senior center? That's my last question, Lee. I promise. Yeah, how much okay. would it cost to do the senior center this year? Now, uh, Sean. I think he's he's running yeah, that number for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean the initial projection uh, was fifty six thousand um, dollars. That's the initial projection that was made about a year ago. Um, but that's the, the rough estimate. <clears throat> well, I would then move, would like to move that we increase your budget by fifty six thousand um, dollars. I don't have. I should have written down the original number, but I didn't. Um, and. Number was 91,000. Okay. Um, so that brings it to 147. Do we have a motion to increase this uh, CIP 7G um, budget line item by $56,000 to a total of 147,000? With the caveat knowing that we would have to take $56,000 from another line item. Do we have a second on that motion? Second. All right. Discussion? Any members have any discussion on this move uh, motion? Does, does everybody else agree that this really kind of needs to be done? I second it for you. Yeah, yeah. good. So we have we have discussion on the floor. Representative Obrey, Representative Bailey. Representative any comments? Is not in your committee, just so you know. Oh, she's not in the committee. Okay, um, I'm sorry. So before I joined, there were three members. Did that constitute a quorum if we had seven committee members? We had four. You had four. So Sir Bailey, White, and who's the fourth? You. I wasn't here until 620. Okay, How did you start the meeting without four members? We have four members. You have Representative White, you have Representative Bailey, you have Representative Sir, and Representative Semerero is right here next to me. Okay. I want to okay. Up, yeah, to make sure the individual so we had four. Okay. All right. We'll take a couple minute break on this if anyone wants to do to double check that. Okay. All right. So we're being asked to take a quick break just to see if we are allowed to go. That's just want to double check. Okay. I'm taking a quick break. Um, are are we able to continue discussion until we get the information? Represent our moderator Rusk. Sure. Do you want to? I'll, I'll step out. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, You're fine. You're fine. All right, but if there's if there's no other discussion, um, Representative Cimarero, did I get that? I, I, I would be opposed because we have to take the money from somewhere else. Right. And, and okay. I don't know anywhere right now where we can. Sure. It, it is. I, I agree. It's, it's kind of difficult since this is um, our first item that we're looking at. Um, you know, I, I have taken a look at the other numbers. I think we could find... Uh, at least in my opinion, places to cut. Um, I, I do think this is a priority. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we can't designate where the funds come from. So um, I have half a mind to, to table it for a battle over ARPA projects. Um, but I think it does at least make a statement coming out of committee that this is something we want to prioritize for. Um, I definitely see it as an accessibility issue, you know, for folks who are sick or unable to make it. Um, out to the facility, but also myself, you know, I, I've got young kids, I work, it makes it a lot easier for me to participate in local government when I'm able to Thank zoom you. in as it were. 
So um, I I think this should be a priority for the town. Okay, so we have a. Um, Cindy says we can't do it. We can only go up to the higher of near the council. All right, so um, we'll call that motion moot. Sorry, but it'll definitely be reported out of committee that that's something that we wanted to do. Um, moving forward, so I'm, I, right, moderator, does that just close the motion since it's correct? Yeah. Correct. All right, so yeah. moving forward, um, Representative Surf, I'll give you a moment to make a comment and then we're going to move on to Representative White's question. I just didn't hear what what um, town manager Burt said. So I was wondering, as long as Sean is sitting across from him, can he make an adjustment so we can hear him? Did you hear him, Lee? I did. So I heard him I as called, well. I called Cindy Landry. She says it's based on each individual CIP. You can only go to the higher of my number or the council number. In other okay. words, we can't. So we can't do this one, right? I am in favor of though, maybe through another process outside the budget, coming up with money for this. I do think it's important. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Representative uh, White, your question? <clears throat> what I really wanted to say is if Representative Surf would give him the moon, I would give him the stars. I did not <laughs> I meet one, I didn't miss one meeting in two years, even though there were times when I wished I could have. <laughs> um, it's all because of this library and Shane. And thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Representative Bailey, your question? Uh, thank you. I, I just make a motion for $91,000. All right. Do we have a second for that motion? Second from Cimarero. Do we have discussion? $91,000? Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I am also a yes on that. $91,000 for 7G, CIP 7G. All right. Thank you so much. And then I think um, moving to the next <laughs> item. Let me pull up my agenda. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you very Excuse much. Me. Thank you for all the kind thank words. You. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm, I'm an I too because I, I didn't realize we weren't going to vote on the other one. Okay. So. Um, so I guess, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we should have had two items for the library today. Was no, this the first had, motion that was made? No, we had two motions beforehand. Um, oh, I thought you said we hadn't made a motion yet? On that item, we had not. Um, account okay. 1063 um, passed in the amount of $1,685,970 in um, 400 and account 3310 borrow its DT passed in the amount of $20,000 again, 400. There was no changes. Okay. Correct. Great. All right. So let's move on. We're doing uh, planning now. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right. Um, I guess. Trying to find it. Uh, 1046. We're on account 1046, and that is page 126 of your budget books. <clears throat> All right. So we have uh, planning and development services account 1046, looking for an overall increase in $22,000. $22,102. Um, do we have, we have Director Reiner here? Hello. Hi, thanks for joining us. Uh, so would you like to um, go over your budget? Start sure. us off? Uh, yes, so uh, good evening everyone. John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, so yes, uh, this year our increase in the budget is just a little bit over $22,000. Personnel services are up 34,426 and operations are down 12,324. Um, a lot of the funding that we're looking for this year, the increase is really just due to contractual raises for uh, staff members. We will, in this upcoming year's budget, have the uh, ARPA coordinator position, which is fully grant funded through the ARPA process as well as the sustainability and resiliency manager position. 
We continue to work on projects such as sustainability and mystic, uh, upcoming for this year will be a climate action plan and update to our uh, zoning regulations for a number of items, including short-term rentals and others. Happy to answer any questions. We still have a fair bit of development application uh, coming through. If you do look at, through the financing plan section of our budget, you'll see that we still are expecting a little over half a million dollars in building permit revenue, which does offset our budget. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward budget. We have a few CIP items that we can talk about under that item. All right. Do we have um, any questions from the committee? Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, I would very like, very much like to know how much it would take to enforce the zoning regulations. For instance, um, with respect to corporations, which are doing short-term rentals in residential areas, which is it's not a not the short-term rental issue of people renting out, you know, their own houses or Groton residents. This is like corporations that are not anywhere near Groton who are renting out houses, which is completely against the zoning regulations. Can you explain why we're not enforcing that? And can you explain how much money it would take to enforce it if you're right, if you just are short on money for that? So um, I, I think that's a, a little bit more in-depth discussion, but we do not regulate the difference between uh, a person or a corporation. I believe that the, uh, the courts of the United States have shown that corporations actually have a lot of the same rights as people. So that's something that we can't differentiate between uh, ownership and enforcement. And why not? Uh, point of order, I'm sorry, this isn't a budget question, Representative Surf. I understand you're asking for enforcement, but it sounds like this isn't something to be enforced in town. So I'd like to really keep this focused on the budget and the accounts in front of us. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Director Reiner, but just being respectful of everyone's time, this is budget focused. Um, we can have the STR discussion in a different forum where it's more appropriate. So it's not a question of money then? No, Correct. I don't believe so. Any other questions from the committee? Um, I do have a question. Um, were you able to fill the climate resilience uh, manager position this past year? We are working on it. You're still working on it. Yeah, it's out. It's out, and we're receiving applicants now. Okay. It, it's it's been a very difficult uh, recruiting time. Um, I'm actually. We're doing our best to get the word out there. There's a lot of open positions throughout the region. And it's not as easy to recruit people as it used to be. Um, and then I guess my second question is about how long are you expecting to take to fill that ARPA coordinator position? Well, that position has been filled for about two months now. Oh, okay. Was that an internal hire? No, that was an external hire. All right, uh, that's it for my questions. Representative Sir, if your hand is up. Uh, yes, um, is, it, is it your purview to, um, to enact noise ordinances and light ordinances for the time? I'm sorry, this is a budget discussion, Representative Sir. I really wanna keep it fo focused on the budget, please. Well, Representative again, Bailey agrees, it's a point of order. If it's a question of money, that's all I want to know is if it's if it's their purview and if it's a question of money. It's a point of order. It's a point of order. Stick to the budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take that point of order, Representative Bailey. Um, yeah, it's 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 within their purview um, and it's within their budget. And if there's any noise ordinance issues, um, that's more of a policy issue outside of what we're doing right here in this committee. But I, I think that Director Reiner is registered. That this is a concern of yours. Is there any? I'm sorry. Representative Surf, do you have any budget related questions? All right, so this is being done under the current budget then, right? Correct. And do we have a light ordinance and is that being done um, under the current budget? I don't know if we have a light ordinance. Uh, Director Reiner? We do not have a residential light ordinance. There are certain standards with commercial development. 
ordinance it's being enforced under this current budget that would be enforced under this current budget if it deals right. with commercial property ordinances are the purview generally of the town council great the thank you thank you any other budget related questions no nope. all right would someone like to make a a motion for the account 1046 so moved uh, can you please state your amount, uh, Representative White? Um, uh, 22,000, I'm sorry, I didn't have my glasses on. $22,102 or 1.4%. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The, I don't mean to be playing games with you. Do we have a motion for the amount of $1,618,196? I'm not Haley, do second. Have that in front of me. There we go. <laughs> no worries. All right, so we've got that second. Um, Discussion? Who was your first, please? I was, I made a motion. Okay. I, I usually try not to do it, but I did it this time, just for clarity. Um, so we have a motion on the floor for $1,618,196, a second from Representative Bailey. Any discussion on this motion? Representative, uh, sir, if your hand is still up, do you have yes. a discussion on the motion? Yes, I would like to reduce that amount uh, by four hundred thousand um, dollars, and I unfortunately I just can't seem to coordinate my book with what the. Um, I mean, I took the book right off the website, but I, the pages are not matching the planning. So, if you could give me the the full amount again, four million. Sure. So you're you're offering a second motion to reduce the budget by four hundred thousand dollars to a total of one million two hundred eighteen thousand one hundred ninety six. I thought the total was four million. One one six one eight one nine six. One million okay. six hundred and eighteen thousand one hundred and ninety-six. Okay. I want to reduce it by ten percent. So I want to reduce it by hundred and sixty-seven. And all right. So that would so, be one million. One, so one hundred and sixty-seven. Okay. What's the number? Uh you can give us a number, Representative Sir, for I'll give. Yeah, hold on. I'm doing back of the napkin math here. I really shouldn't be. One, six, one, eight, one, nine, six, right? That was the one, eight, yeah. one, nine, six. Okay. You're saying one million four hundred and fifty six thousand three hundred and seventy six dollars and forty cents. That's ten percent yeah. off. And ten percent off. Well, I'm taking what I'm making it one sixty seven. Oh, I I can make it one sixty eight. That's actually easier. So and we'll leave the one ninety six in there. Oh, I'm so confused. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to take notes here. Yeah. What is your number? And I said, no. okay, so that would be down to um, 940,000 and $196. Oh, hold on one more time. What's the number again, please? Um, 1 million, no, I'm sorry, 900, I'm sorry. Um, you have to understand it with a pulmonary embolism the oxygen level is not what it ought to be in the body, so. All right, so um, Representative Surf, ten taking 10% 10 off of this budget would give you a number of 1.6 million, one million six hundred and two thousand and seven dollars That's exactly 10% off. Okay. Is this your motion? Yes, that's my motion. All right, Representative, or Moderator Rusk, just so you know, 1602007. 1602007. Okay. Correct. That's a 10% reduction. Do we have a second for that motion? Do we have a second for that motion? That motion fails. So back to the original motion of the full amount um, 1618196 Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Representative Surf opposed. Any abstentions? All right. Thank you very much. That passes.
we are on to the CIPs. Let me pull out my page numbers. Uh, which CIP are we starting with? I should know this. I'm so sorry. Uh, economic assistance fund. It's uh, the, all, all of our projects start on page 68. On 68? Yes, that's the uh, overview is on page 68. Mm, page in the CIP section. Oh, sorry. I'm 241 in our books. No. 241 in our books. That makes more sense to me. Thank you. Are we on page 68 of the no, CIP? I gave, 241. I gave the wrong page. My apologies. Two, 241? Yes, 241. Uh, <laughs> So this is CIP 8A. It's planning and economic development. Um, we're looking at a budget request for, what is this? Is it $50,000 for this year? Am I reading this correctly? Yeah. Yes, uh, $50,000 a year over course of five years. Bailey um, makes a motion. For $50,000. All right, do we have a, um, actually I'd like to invite yeah. Director Reiner to talk a little bit about this first, um, but I'll hear a second. Do we have a second on $50,000? You have a second for me. White. Bailey, then White. Director Reiner, would you like to talk at all about this item? Can I just make a quick point of order? Sure. Um, just so you're aware, the town council put this at 25,000, just so you know. They cut it to 25. Okay, and we can choose between the higher of? Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you for, for pointing that out, moderator Rusk. So 25,000 is what the council has it at. Uh, Representative Bailey made a motion and it's been seconded on the floor for 50,000. I'd like Director Reiner to speak a little bit towards this and then we'll take questions from the committee. Sure, uh, so again, the Economic Assistance Fund is uh, a funding source that we utilize in town for basically small business infrastructure. So when smaller businesses in town are looking to locate or expand, we allow them to apply for uh, utilizing this fund. It is reviewed by our Economic Development Commission. It is then approved by the town council. And in order for them to um, gain any funding from this, they have to show a increase in their grand list by more than this, the requested amount of money annually. Some of the projects that this has been used for in the past are things like um, water and sewer line extensions, electric and telephone extensions, public sidewalks, road improvements, traffic, uh, street lighting, and drainage improvements. Um, these improvements can be done on both public or private property, but it's really looked at uh, as building infrastructure that will last beyond that particular use. And it's something that brings up the infrastructure in that business area development. Some of the projects that this funding has been used on in the past uh, were some improvements at SIFT Bake Shop, Grand Wine and Spirits over in the Route 12 area, uh, the village of Bluff Point, that residential development that was done uh, near the town hall, and the standard building down in Mystic. Happy to answer any other questions. Oh, you're muted. Yes. Um, I thought so I can Brian Baby, <laughs> Representative Sir. Yes. I would just like to make a comment. This is um, one of the amounts of money that I've always been very much in favor of. And in fact, the council used to cut it all the time and the RTM used to try to cut it um, when I was on there. And I always used to try to put it back for Mark Ofinger because I think it's an extremely good um, um, use of our money for small businesses. They struggle and you know, an amount like this can really help them um, improve their business. And I'm completely in favor of it. Small business is the heart of, Amer of the American economy. I would actually like to put back the 25,000, but are we allowed to do that? We, we already have, with Representative Bailey's motion, uh, Mr. Reiner Good. would be getting his full ask. Good, wonderful. Um, and we cannot go above 50,000. 
Uh, okay. Yep. Is, are you all set with your comments? Yep. Great. Representative Bailey. Uh, yes. Yes. I, I would like to amend my first motion to another motion of twenty-five thousand dollars. All right. Do we have a second for that amendment? Um, you'd have to get consent from the seconder of the original amendment. Representative White, do you uh, support reducing the amount to twenty-five thousand? I do. You do. Okay. So on the floor right now, we have a motion for $25,000 for the EAC fund. Um, do we have any questions for um, from the committee on this new number? Uh, moderator Russ, did your hand go up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you've asked for $50,000 every year. How much has been spent in the past few years? So uh, currently, our un uncommitted fund balance is $116,000. But of that, the town council has preliminarily, um, it hasn't gone through the entire uh, review process yet, but they've uh, preliminarily committed $100,000 towards the Groton Heights redevelopment project when that moves forward. So really there's only about $16,000 that not, is not fully committed within this funding source. And this is something that uh, does make a very big difference for small business development as um, uh, representative sir had indicated. So this money stays in this account. It doesn't roll back into the general fund if it's not. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So Mr. Reiner, um, I'm sorry, was that the end of your comments, moderator yes. Rusk? Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to kind of reframe the question uh, and ask again for, for an answer about how much is uh, given to recipients from this fund on average. Is $100,000 a typical amount? No, $100,000 is not a typical amount. It, it's based upon the, um, the tax increase on a yearly basis. So I think we've had some awards that have been in the sixteen dollars to $20,000 range. We've had some others um, over $50,000, but they're usually, I want to say, less than $50,000. I apologize. I don't have all of the uh, expenses individually in front of me, but... Um, this is a Thank funding you. source that a little bit goes a long way, and it's something that Broughton has recognized is, is really stepping up and putting this out there. Thank you. Um, and how long has this fund been open and being um, funded? Uh, prior to my working for the town, so this has been around for at least 10 years, if not longer. And is $50,000 a typical amount for it to be funded? I'm sorry, I don't have the historicals in front of me. Yes, yeah, so that's been the, the typical funded requests. Some years, nothing's been put in there. Others, I think more than $50,000. But if we look to put 50 in each year, that will continue to give us a healthy balance so that we can uh, allow these types of requests to move forward. Okay, and I have one more question. What does the town do to advertise this uh, resource to businesses? Uh, so this is something that through our economic development program and all of our business outreach, we let uh, businesses and new businesses looking to come here. Um, we make them aware of this program as mm -hmm. well as we have kind of a, a worksheet that we give to all new or expanding businesses when they're asking for help and assistance because Many times they'll just, oh, we need money. It's like, well, not everything's about money. What other help is there? Because there might be some things that would fall into this program. There might be other things that are more state or federal level grants that we point them to. So it's kind of a one piece of a larger package that we put out there to new and expanding businesses, as well as existing businesses, so that they're aware of these opportunities if they want to expand in the future. And is there anything in the application process that might be cumbersome for small businesses? Just having worked for one, I know a lot of the times we were, you know, at least the owners say they didn't want to go after it just because it would take too long to go through all the, the hoops. Is there anything we can do to streamline to make it more accessible, more utilized? So a few years ago, uh, time is always mixed up now with the last two years of COVID, but I want to say probably three or four years ago, we completely updated the review process for this. We went through the town council to try to streamline that process, add more clarity uh, within that process. And 
make it easier so that the Economic Development Commission reviews this and the council reviews this. Staff will also hold the hand of any applicant going through it. I think the most cumbersome process is the fact that um, rightly so, we don't give money to anyone until after they built this and they give us the receipts so that we, sh we do it on a reimbursement basis. Okay. And sometimes folks have had trouble just pulling their paperwork together. It's something we let them know from the very onset of this is the process it is. We need all of your receipts and uh, we're often really uh, working with them to make sure that they have their receipts, they're in the right name under the right corporation. So th that gets a little tricky at the end. But from a financing and accountability perspective, we have not found a better way of doing that. We need to make sure that from our end, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Absolutely. All right. Um, I would actually like to um, put out a second motion. Um, I guess kind of split the baby here for $40,000. Um, I think that this is a, a pretty vital program for our small businesses and I'd hate to see it get reduced down to 25,000. I'll so second I'd, that. I'll right, second that. You, representative, sir. Um, do we have any discussions on the $40,000 number? Um, yes, uh, I would like to say, just give an example of one of the wonderful things that was done with it in my time, which is to put a new sidewalk and a, and a wonderful parking lot in front of the massage therapy uh, business that was, I think it got put in place maybe 15, 10, 15 years ago. And I don't know if you remember driving by there, but there is a marvelous sidewalk exactly where you actually would need one on Pequonic Road because it's a, people are going quite fast there and there's a turn. So I was really impressed with what we were able to do to help that little business um, improve the way the whole place looked. So that's typically, I would say, what you know we try to do um, uh, with that money, which is why it's really important. Any other comments from committee members? Questions? All right, I believe uh, according to Robert's rules, we vote on the second motion. And if that passes, then that's the number. If it fails, we go on to the original motion. But does that sound correct, Moderator Rusk and Manager Burt? We do the second motion first and then we move on to the original if it fails? Correct. Right. right. All right, so uh, we're voting on a motion for $40,000 now. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that was uh, Cimarero, Gothier, White, Surf. All right. All those opposed? Bailey. Bailey opposed. All right. That's four in favor, one opposed. That motion passes for $40,000. Um, Mr. Burt, will we have to offset somewhere else in the amount of $15,000? No. Sorry. You don't. No. No. You don't. Okay, thank you. All right, so moving on. We are now on item, uh, what are we, 8B, correct? Open space acquisition? Page? Correct. Uh, 242. And this item, the town council had zeroed out, or it really failed any motions, right? So did they zero it out, or would they just fail to come to a number? It defaulted to zero because they couldn't come to a number. They couldn't come to a number. Majority. Okay. So the ask here is for $25,000 for open space. Uh, Representative Surf, could you please put your hand down? Um, oh. Are you just at the ready? No, no, I'm sorry. Lower hand. Thank you. Um, so the ask here is um, $25,000. It says there's uh, currently an unencumbered balance of zero dollars. Um, Director Reiner, would you like to speak on this before we hear a motion? Yeah, sure. So this is funding that is usually set aside for uh, matching grant funds for open space acquisition or to do appraisals, property surveys, or environmental assessments on properties that we're looking to acquire for open space. The reason that the balance is down to zero is because the, the balance that was in this account is being utilized to assist in the purchase of the Wolfbrook property. Uh, knowing Pledger Road. All right. Do we have a motion from committee for any amount, anywhere between zero? I guess what's what's the highest we can go, uh, Mr. Burt? Twenty-five. 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 
Between zero and 25, pick a number. Anyone? Bailey yes. makes, makes a motion for zero. Do we have a second on that motion? And, second. And, and my, uh, my, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Representative Bailey. Would you like to speak to that motion? I, I, well, yes, I, I just have just a small comment um, because of the purchase of the Wolf property, which is like close to like over $200,000. I think we have enough money for land open purchase for a while, and we just need to cool off and give it a break a little bit. Any other comments or questions from committee? Yes, um, I have a comment. I'd like yep. to move the. I'd like to move the amount of. Um, I'll do what you did. Split the split the baby. I'd like to move fifteen thousand dollars for open space. 15,000 for open space. Do we have a second on that? Do we have a second on the um, $15,000 for open space? All right, that motion fails. I'm sorry, Representative Surf. Do we have any other comments, questions, or discussion on the number zero? Can I, should I just say something for future reference? Sure. The reason you want to build up um, a fund starting with small amounts is because it often takes a large amount to buy a property that comes up. And it often can be a property that we would really want for the town, like to create a, you know, a bike path, just a piece of the property that we're missing to complete a back bike path, for instance, or to put another baseball field or something because it's, it can be open space and recreation. And if you don't have the money ready to do that, then you can't you know, get that property and would go to someplace else. Um, I know that in Falmouth, Massachusetts, where my friend lives, they automatically pay 10% of their property taxes automatically goes to an open space acquisition fund. We're nowhere near that in this town, but many towns do do it. Um, it's really important. I know you, we have a wonderful uh, groups here that get a lot of open space and that's probably why most of you are opposed to it. But that's one of the reasons people love Groton so much is because of our open space. So next year, please, or maybe when we get to the council, when, when we get the full RTM, we can still try again, right? Sure. Okay. I'm done. All right. I, I, I hear your comments. I totally agree. There's, there's something to be said about building up the fund, even if we don't have anything right in front of us. Um, I think Groton's done pretty good at, as far as uh, acquiring open space. And um, yeah, a lot, lot going on in this budget. I think if we do have to find little slivers here or there to cut, um, this might have to be a sacrifice for this year. Uh, I'm gonna, without hearing any other comments or questions, move the vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. So four in favor, one opposed, Representative Surf. That motion passes. We're moving on to the next, I believe we have one more, one more CIP? Three more. Three more, okay. All right, um, 8C, oh, we're just going down the line, it's easy. All right, 8C, it's the gateway slash sun, wayfinding sign project. Um, they're requesting $70,000 over the course of three years. Am I reading this correctly? $70,000 for, oh no, $70,000 for this year um, for the design and construction of the next phase of signage and installation improvements. Um, Mr. Reiner, would you like to speak on this item? Sure. Uh, so very briefly, we had done a wayfinding signage master plan about three years ago. So this is more larger directional signage around town identifying buildings and places of interest more than what uh, our Connecticut DOT does for uh, signage around town. We had originally requested uh, a little over $300,000 about two to three years ago for implementation. Both the council and the RTM had suggested that we do this uh, incrementally over the years. The first targeted implementation areas were Route 117, uh, down by the 195 ramp to the Route 1 intersection, as well as downtown Mystic. The Route 117 corridor would have a gateway sign at 117 and 1. 
as well as directional signage along 117. This is something else that the beautification committee is also very interested in. Uh, the mystic component would have banner signs, a kiosk sign with maps, outside of bank store books, and directional signage for parking and other uses. Um, we <laughs> did uh, put a bit out in the fall of 2021, and we do have some signs now that have arrived in February of 22. We're just working with Public Works and the Connecticut DOT to install that first phase of those signs. Um, I think some folks may have seen some of those. There were some Facebook posts, so maybe three months ago, I think, showing some of those signs. And um, the next phase is envisioned is the Route 12 corridor ending around I-95, including uh, gateway signage entering from Ledyard. Thank you. Uh, do we hear a motion for a number on this item? Um, Excuse me, what, what did the town council cut it to? The town council didn't cut it. They, the town council left it at 70,000, but moved it to ARPA funding. Okay. Oh, they moved it. To ARPA funding. And we don't have the ability to change funding sources, just the number. So point of clarification, um, the number that we're voting on, would this be paid by general funds or by ARPA funds? ARPA funds. ARPA funds. Okay. All right. Do we hear a number? Representative Bailey, your hands up. Uh, yeah, I just have a question uh, for the town manager or either uh, Reiner. Um, the question is, has that already been put by the ARPA coordinator? Yes. Okay, Our thank you very much. Meetings, yes. All right, just back up. Representative, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm really having trouble understanding what this has to do with COVID, trying to help with people who have suffered from, from the COVID thing. I mean, can you explain the relationship between that? Because I see all these things going on these ARPA funds. You know, um, I think this is very problematic for our image that we're putting stuff like this um, under the ARPA fund things. Can somebody explain it to me? Because I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Point of order, um, that's not related to our budget discussion since that is a funding source and the RTM doesn't have any authority over where the money comes from. Um, we're just voting on the amount. So if at some point you want to go to the council representative serve and argue that this should be a general fund expense and not an ARPA expense, the town council is the, the forum for that. Uh, hearing committee, we're just voting on a number. All right, I'm gonna move the figure of zero then. All right, do we hear a second for that motion? I'll second it. Do we have discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. aye. Yep. All those aye. opposed? Aye. Bailey, aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. So, uh, we, no. I mean, I'm sorry, I voted aye. Yep, so that's three, four, and two against. This item gets moved to zero. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, we are on um, item 8D, the downtown Mystic Parking Management. Uh, Is there any parking? <laughs> Lee, you want to stay here? <laughs> You were hey, supposed to laugh before me. <laughs> hey, we got to hold it together, ladies. Um, so the requested funding is for one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Mr. Reiner, would you like to speak on this item? Sure. So uh, the town last year did a parking management study in downtown Groton, looking at the issues working in the Groton side of Mystic, as well as the Stonington side of Mystic working cooperatively together. Uh, we are also uh, just starting the next phase of that project working together and we'll be pulling the stakeholder group together again sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this particular project would be looking for funding to actually pay for some of the recommended improvements. All of these improvements still need to be vetted through the town council and the community uh, at large 
but some of those would be shared lot par parking agreements uh, and working on programs for employee and limited resi resident parking, a permit program, possible valet parking, uh, electronic handheld parking enforcement, as well as uh, possibly on-street metered parking. So those are the solutions that we're looking at on both sides of the river. And this funding request would pay for those improvements on the Groton side of Mystic. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the committee? I have a question. Uh, Mr. Reiner, I live on Pearl Street, 6 Pearl Street. I have already gotten something like four or five tickets for parking in front of my own house when I'm just trying to drop something off because the loading zone there or whatever, it's all very complicated, even though there's never anybody there. I'd like to know, when you did your study, how many residents of those very busy streets, Gravel, Pearl, High Street, et cetera, how many residents were invited to participate in the parking study on the Groton side? All the residents were invited. We held two or three public meetings. We had, now a number of those meetings were during Zoom or over Zoom because a lot of this was done over COVID. On the stakeholder committee, there were residents from both Groton and Stonington on that committee. There was no, there was a, there was a Stonington member. There was nobody on the Groton side. Um, I can't believe that you invited everybody on the um, on the Groton side in a res in that whole residential district, and that nobody wanted to serve on the committee. Is that what you're telling me? Because you didn't have any residents there at all when you did your study. Uh, I don't have the study document in front of me, but I do recall um, at least one Groton resident yeah, being involved. Was. Yes. Yeah, was it um, was it Lee Vincent? Um, I and in addition to the, the stakeholder group, there were interviews that were conducted with yeah. residents and business owners because we wanted to get input from residents. Again, the suggested uh, changes and improvements are not yet set in stone. We plan to have additional in-person and hybrid uh, outreach meetings to get more formal input both at uh, stakeholder meetings as well as town council meetings because we wanna understand what it is people are looking for. Whether or not something today is a loading zone or a no parking zone, that is not something that came out of this study. Well, I do hope you invite residents um, from, my, you know, from my corner because we're suffering from absolutely everything. The people that you did have on your committee, by the way, I checked them, were all downtown vendors who, of course, want, want people to be able to park in front of the you know, residential homes. That's fine, except Thank when you, residents... Okay, yep. sorry, I'm all... I can't help get, getting up on my soapbox for everything. Sorry, um, do you have any other questions related to this budget item? Yeah, will they invite me at the next meeting? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, how much is we invite you, yes. All right, thank you. All right, Representative Bailey. Hey, hey thank you very much. Uh, last year uh, we had a, a CIP of uh, 8F Foxtrot, and uh, it was uh, funded out of the capital reserve fund for seventy five thousand dollars. Also for downtown Mystic Park Park and Management, and it was phase one. And that was it. And now we have this CIP and it's also phase one, but it's twice as the amount from last year. And it's Director Heiner could explain or, or the know, town last, manager. Last however. year's funding source was cut. Totally. Maybe. A little bit for study. There was just a little bit left in for that study, I believe. I, I think it might have been fifteen thousand dollars. So yeah. Okay. And, and and another question that starts to come to mind is that uh, the towns of Groton and Stonington for this CIP have jointly funded 
a parking management study for Mystic, which was completed. Does anybody have any kind of idea about like, you know, where the funding came or how much it could have been, perhaps? Oh, yes, so that first phase of the study was funded in the, so our, right now we're in fiscal year 22, last year 21, in fiscal year 20, funds were used uh, that year to do that parking management study. The cost of that was shared between Groton and Stonington. I think the total cost of that project was approximately $25,000 total for both towns. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to make a motion uh, for $0 for this current CIP. Thank you. Do we have a second on that motion? Okay, I'm sorry, that, that motion fails. Um, I do have a question for Director Reiner before I put forward my own um, amount. So as, actually a few questions. So as I understand the $15,000 that's part of this ask is for continued studies? Correct. That the planning any and engineering- Yeah, any additional study- Outreach. Outreach or uh, design or bid specs. <clears throat> Okay, and then construction is the, is the bulk of it there. Um, so do we have an MOA with the town of Stonington to make sure that they're funding their portion of whatever we do here? So we're not seeing another um, bridge situation where we go back and forth on who funds one year and who doesn't the next? In terms of the construction? Uh, or, or also the planning, either way. Well, in terms of the planning, they actually signed the, the contract also, so. Sure. They're committed to it. Um, so they're committed to the, the 15,000 and then for the 135,000? Yeah. Well, once they're done, she, we need a total, she'll uh, bring it to our finance committee. But the, what they're looking at is there's likely going to be some component of parking meters which pay for themselves within a year to two years. That's going to probably be some part of the component of it. Um, and it can actually help pay for other things. But um, they would fund up front to put those in. But it's a big priority for starting to, we just met recently again with Danielle Cheeseboro over there. It's, I by far and away get more complaints and she says the same thing about downtown Mystic than anywhere else. That's by far and away the most complaints I get. And then both of us, we wanna make sure we stay on the same page because Stonington want, wants to get something done. And what we don't want is them to move forward without us and then more parking shift to our side. So whatever we do, we wanna stay hand in hand together. All right, um, so I guess the answer is no. Does it says I'm still muted. Am I muted? No, you're not muted. No, okay, good. So, um, so the answer is no, we don't have any kind of agreement that whatever we fund, they'll fund to whatever their portion or split is. My, my understand my concern is just that we've been in a situation with Stonington before where they wanted something done, but didn't fund their side of it where we did. And we got bouncing. Yes, go ahead, sorry. This one's a little different though, because we're, it wouldn't be a likely be a joint construction project. It would be separate. And what happens if they don't follow along and we do, then traffic, then parking shifts more to their side and they have more of an issue. So it's not something that we would actually construct together. And what, what kind of components besides parking meters is this 135 number made up of? Well, it has to be finalized through the public input. The, um, as John mentioned, there'd be the shared lot agreements and we'd probably, we may, let's say there's uh, churches, banks that are on the weekends fully utilizing their uh, lots. We would, we've actually had some preliminary talks and what you might have to do is uh, trade something like maybe every few years we have to pave it, that kind of thing. So there's, you know, we, we have to figure that out, what's gonna be, um, what they get for it. But there's, we're also looking at possible uh, seat route you know, additions, we're looking at a variety of things. It's going to take a lot of different things to solve it. And we're also looking at um, what we can, and whatever we do, part of the priority is making sure the neighborhoods are improved. What we don't want to do is push more parking out into the neighborhoods. So it's got to be a holistic approach wherever we do before we would move forward. Great, thank you. So I'd like to make a motion for $90,000 and that would be $15,000 for the, um, 
planning and engineering studies we've already committed to as a town and an additional 75,000 to begin um, any of that construction. Do we have a motion on 90,000 or a second for that motion? I second the motion. Great. Um, I don't care who takes a second on that, we or, or sir. Uh, do we have any discussion on that motion? Um, yes, I'd like to say something. Yes, I, Representative. Sir. I, I think it's really important this time that you engage. I mean, the way you do your outreach, you kind of get like anybody who may not even have a big stake in it because they have a huge driveway for four cars or whatever. I would really like to be invited to. Uh, Invite me to your office and let me talk to you about, since I've been living there for two years, some of the ideas that I have that would work for the residents there as well as hopefully the vendors. But the whole thing can't be driven by just the vendors. I mean, right. everything in Mystic is like that now. So I will vote for this amount of money and I seconded the motion. Ooh, is that the baby? Um, <laughs> I'll vote for this. If the outreach can genuinely involve, you know, residents that really do have a stake in it. And we have to make an effort to go after those <laughs> residents. Sure. Sorry about that. Um, all right, thank you, Representative Surf. Any other comments or questions on this motion? Can I just, can I talk real fast? Uh, just to mention, um, yeah, we'd be glad to meet with you, uh, uh, Representative Surf, but also, uh, uh, Chief Pissarro and I are the two members of the Traffic Authority, which a lot of these things have to go through the Traffic Authority too. We regularly get petitions from neighbors on what they want to see happen. Uh, we've had quite a lot of on ongoing dialogue with uh, neighborhoods along Pearl, along Gravel, um, along High Street, um, and some others on what they'd like to see happen too. We're still trying to figure that out. Um, there's been a lot of interest out there, so I just want to make clear that there's been out in other avenues uh, more public input, but certainly point well taken. We've talked about it at the council and we plan to have uh, some well-posted uh, public input forums. I just want to give you my ideas. I, I'm not the decision right. maker. Thank you. All right, so we'll we'll vote on this then. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? <laughs> you're not a member of the committee. I'm sorry, you're not a member, Theo. <laughs> the baby's the baby's opposed. Yeah. He knows we need a lot of net parking management. Yeah. All right. So that passes. Um ninety thousand dollars on that fund. Uh moving on to the next page. We are on uh CIP eight. E, Mystic Coastal Access Trail and Signage Program. There is an ask for $15,000 for refinement of the plan and for public oh. outreach. Um, Mr. Reiner, would you like to speak on this? You actually just said it very well. So um, we had worked on a coastal access plan for downtown Mystic. Uh, historically, the town and with any new coastal development where there's a change from a not from a water dependent use to a non-water dependent use, we can get additional public access along the coast as part of that project. Uh, we've never done a formal plan for that. We began one of those uh, a little bit before COVID and we want to do some further refinement of that plan and more public engagement in, um, as part of that process. And that's what this extra $15,000 will assist with. Thank you. Do we have any questions or comments from the committee? Um, oh wait, let me raise my hand. Uh, yeah, you, I, would, I would like to move the figure of zero for that. Bailey, second. Great. Uh, any discussion on that? Well, I'd like to explain why I'm moving zero. Would love um, to hear it. Yep, go ahead, Representative. <laughs> because there are at least three or four coastal access points in Mystic, two of them in downtown Mystic on Water Street, and I forgot the name of the other little street. Um, there is like zero parking there for cars or trailers or anything. So unless you specify that somebody can go down there carrying their canoe on their heads um, and put it in the water without leaving cars or trailers, um, I, I am very much opposed to making big signs saying, 
over here for your coastal access and your 80 foot trailer where you're going to put your motorboat in. So that should be taken into account in the parking study first. Once you solve that, then we can put signs up. Yeah, but Representative Surf, what about uh, what about people on foot that are just looking to walk the coastal access uh, areas? There are such, and, and uh, well, I can um, barely see you. Yeah, you're asking whether people can walk there. So, uh, Representative um, Simarero, I'm sorry if I'm not getting that right. He had asked. Um, you know, what is your take on people who are walking around on foot? How are they going to be able to identify the locations without these signs? So I can lean uh, on that. Too. A lot of the usage of the coastal access points today are actually the coastal access walkway. So when we think about the boardwalk coming right off of the main strip by the, the bridge, uh, going both uh, north and south, there's public access points there. They're not very well signed at all. Going further south towards the Mystic Museum of Art, trying to identify a path through the parking lot there that's shared with the Mystic Museum of Art and some of the commercial development. A lot of this is more about coastal access and walking along the shoreline. There are a couple of points in that area where there's the one town boat ramp uh, there, but that's not heavily utilized um for people driving in because of lim the limited parking there but a lot of this really is about getting more foot traffic along the coast and that was something that we've heard from numerous residents throughout the mystic area and throughout town of how important it is to identify and sign this these areas because a number of existing property owners that the town does have easements over their property for coastal access have blocked that uh, taken down the signs, they just mysteriously disappear overnight, and um, making sure that we do something to permanently mark these areas, not with gigantic gaudy signs, but just so that it's visible so people can see what this trail is. Thank you. Did you have any other additional questions, Representative, sir? No, not really. I'm just stymied by this whole thing. All right, and I had a quick question. Mr. Burt, did we clarify, um, we were totally in the clear on the legality of, of access, right? Yes, we know exactly what access we have. Perfect, all right. Um, so without any other questions or comments um, from the committee, vote on the motion of $0 for the CIP. All those in favor? Bailey. Bailey. Aye. I'm gonna say aye as well on this one. Um, all those opposed? Aye, opposed. All those abstained? Representative White, could you please log a uh, vote? Sure, aye. All right, so that is four in favor, one opposed to Marrero for $0 on the CIP. I believe um, that is the end of our agenda for tonight. Is that right, folks? Ooh. Nice going. Thank you, everyone, so much. Um, I apologize. Wait, wait. What's the baby's name? This is Theodore. We call him Theo or Tito. Cute. He's adorable. Just lift it. 